Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in to the web room, our, our Google Hangout, our virtual room. Make yourself at home. My name is Sam Hill. I'm a team leader at The Rocket Company, and today, three secrets to boost your recurring giving. Three secrets to boost your recurring giving. Totally free training. I'm going to give you the three things that you've got to be doing to get recurring donations on a Sunday by Sunday. To our web room, go ahead and find a chat area, okay? Should be on kind of the right-hand side of your screen. Figure out where it is and just introduce yourself. Tell us who you are and, and where you're, you're tuning in from. And, uh, and we're so excited you're here. You're in the right place. Uh, my name's Sam Hill. I'm a team leader with The Rocket Company if you're just coming in. And today we're going to talk about three secrets to boost your recurring giving to bring you this content. Uh, as you make your way into the room, again, find the chat area. Tell us who you are and where you're from. Um, and then also, if you've got questions as we go today about digital giving, about recurring giving, uh, about money and talking to donors, put it all in the chat stream. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in the hot seat here in a little bit. I'll answer any question that you have um, about digital giving, about recurring giving, um, and I'll answer all those questions. So Jeremy is here from Tulsa, and uh, Israel is here. And Robert, Jeremy, Marty, Kenny, Todd, Dave, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome, welcome, Steve and Craig. Hey, if you're just joining us and you're you're coming into our Google Hangout here, as we call it, we're excited you're going to hang out with us today for about 45 minutes to an hour. We're going to teach you the three secrets to boosting giving at your church. Um, and so we're excited you're here as you're coming in. Just find the chat area. Tell us who you are, where you're from. Lloyd is here from the Bronx. Aaron, Carolyn, um, Craig, welcome everybody. It's always a global event when we do webinars. Uh, so we're just we love seeing people come from all over the country, all over the world, um, and we exist to invest in you during this time. Uh, we're here to pass on some things that we've learned about how to boost your recurring donations so that you can gather more money, more money for more ministry, which is ultimately your goal. And getting recurring donations is a huge game-changing part of that. So we've got Philip from East Arkansas. We've got a Razorback in the room here. Uh, we got Evelyn and Lisa and Nancy. Welcome, welcome. If you're just joining us, we're gonna begin in about one minute. Um, and I'd like you to just find the chat area. The chat area, introduce us, tell us who you are, where you're from. And as we go today, you can put your questions into the chat box. Um, and here in a little bit, Haley is going to queue up some questions for me to answer. And I'll put myself on the hot seat and answer any question you have about digital giving, about recurring donations, about finances, and, and how to make it all happen. Jasper is here from North Carolina. Welcome, Jasper. Uh, we are just excited you all are here. Uh, and I'm pumped to give you this content. We'll begin in just about a minute here or so. Brian is here. Michael is here. Welcome, Johnny. Um, go ahead. You all make yourself at home. Um, if you can, silence your phones and X out the other windows. Just focus. We're going to go right into some content. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come at you hard and fast and show you some things that you need to be doing to get recurring donations. Recurring donations can provide stability to your budget um, and really position your church to do more, reach more people, which I know is, is all of your all's goals and desires uh, because you tell us that. My name is Sam Hill. I'm a team leader at The Rocket Company, and you're in the right place. We're going to talk about three secrets to boost your recurring giving. Let's go ahead and get started. Joyce is here. Natasha, the chat area again. As you have questions as we go today, put them right into the chat box, um, and we'll do some Q&A um, toward the end, a couple different sessions. All right, I'm going to share my screen. I want to make sure that everybody can see this. That would be great. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and uh, and share some content with you all. Can everybody see that? Um, okay. All right. Perfect. Um, let's get rolling. Let's talk about three secrets to boost your recurring giving. Um, and, and what we're going to do here, I'm going to, I'm going to turn off my webcam here. Is that, I'm not sure if everybody can see uh, the full slide deck here. I just want to make sure you can see the content. Uh, there we go. So, Here's my goal today, okay? My goal is every church leader that we talk to, and, and we interact with over 10,000 churches, okay? So a lot of churches. We've got to hear it all, see it all. We know what's not working, what is working. And the goal here today 
is to share with you what is working about boosting your recurring giving. Recurring giving, I'm assuming you're here because you want more of it. You want a larger, more stable base, predictable donations. That's the goal today is to give you real strategies to achieve that. And if you stay to the end, um, I'm going to give you something just for being here. I'm going to give you a monthly communication checklist with your donors, okay? A monthly strategy that you can employ starting this Sunday is in a couple of days from now progress immediately toward boosting your recurring giving um, and and I want to introduce myself so you just can have a face for the name I know you saw me but here's who I am I'm Sam Hill I'm a rocket company team leader I've been in local church leadership for two decades I do a lot of public speaking I do a lot of financial coaching with churches I'm passionate about helping church leaders enjoy ministry okay um, and one of that things one stressed and not as effective as they should be in their role because they're stressed about money in their church. And so one of the reasons why I want to give you some financial so we can help reduce some of that stress, you can enjoy the ministry. So that's my passion. You can see my, my family there and that giant dog that somehow I've become responsible for, right? Uh, listen, when it comes to church finances, I've done a lot of things right, but I've done far more things wrong, okay? I've been a part of a lot of church teams. Um, and we have gotten into the, the survival mode as a church. Survival mode as a church is when you are totally week to week, right? You hear a lot of conversation among your team when it comes to giving things like today was a good week or today was a bad week on Sundays, right? And you're really dependent on special gifts, really dependent on Christmas Eve service, year end services to actually make up your budget. You know, after doing that for years, I discovered that we would always be in survival mode as a church. Budgeting would always be in chaos and not dependable. And ultimately, ministry opportunities would be missed until we had some systems in place that got us out of survival mode and we stopped living week to week. We stopped living month to month. We stopped um, depending on special gifts, special offerings to actually operate as a church, right? And I, I discovered it the hard way. Um, not not that fun. I want you to have an easier path, okay? So, so today is about saying, hey, I learned a lot of hard lessons, um, and I want you to uh, to be have an easier path here for the next couple of months. The hard way is when churches say, let's not fool with digital giving. Let's not emphasize it. It's not worth it, you know? Or your attitude is, well, let's just get it, but let's get it for the people who want it. It's not that that big a deal. Um, or the hard way is not being clear on numbers, right? A lot of churches go out and get digital giving, um, and they're not even really clear on what their goal is when they get digital giving. And so it becomes a hindrance and not something that actually benefits you and impacts your budget um, in a positive way. Uh, or you only end up asking money from up front when you're desperate, right? Sometimes when we do consulting and audits with churches, um, we find they only ask for money from up front, and they only ask for it when they don't have it, right? Which is kind of a hamster wheel if you think about it. You only ask for money when you don't have it. And usually church leaders don't ask for money a lot because they don't want to seem like they're talking about money a lot. And oddly enough, they don't have any money, right? And what does people, what do your church members say when you do talk about it? Uh, you know, we talk about money too much. And so it's this hamster wheel and it leaves you going, man, how can we possibly get this more solid uh, so we're not chasing our tails all the time? Well, that's the hard way, okay? give you an easier way and I want you to put a one in the chat box just punch in the number one if you want strategies today that have helped churches increase total giving total dollars coming in by as much as 50 percent year over year right crazy stuff and churches that have established recurring donation bases by as much as 40 percent put a one in the chat box if you want to get out of survival mode um, and get into thriving mode, okay? But here's my disclaimer before I give you these secrets and give you the content. The disclaimer is that the results are not typical. And all I mean is that some churches are unwilling to make changes in light of facts, okay? So I'm going to give you facts today. I'm going to give you simple math about digital giving that you have to face and you have to decide in light of these facts, will you actually implement systems and processes that um, are in light of those facts, or will you continue to lose money if you are dependent on checks and cash, okay? So you have to be willing to face facts, make changes, gather your team around numbers and facts and not feelings and impressions and preferences, okay? 
here's the three secrets to boosting your recurring giving, okay? Secret number one, you have to make recurring giving, you have to make recurring donations a necessity and not just a want. Every church wants it in theory, but is it really a necessity? I'll tell you how you know if it's a necessity. Secret number two, you have to prioritize your technology features around the goal. Okay, let me say that again. Prioritize your features like text to give and mobile giving around the goal, not the other way around. Too many churches let the features drive their strategy, and that's why they don't have uh, recurring donations. And I'll talk about more about that. Secret number three is something I call the 5C communication strategy, the 5C communication strategy. Okay, let's start with the first one. Remember, if you've got questions, put them into the chat, and I will answer them here shortly. Secret number one, you've got to make recurring donations a necessity and not just a want. Too many church leaders have this type of attitude toward digital giving. Well, we know we have to have it, or, well, it's really for the younger generation, so let's just get it. Well, some people might prefer it. And the attitude basically with a lot of churches that are very dependent on checks and cash is you really think that your donors don't care all that much about utilizing digital giving. As a result, your strategies don't really revolve around digital giving. And I'm telling you that that is inconsistent with today's trends. Your givers prefer digital giving. Your givers prefer digital giving. Fact, okay? Any study, any financial trend, they prefer it. And you can see it right here. Debit and credit cards are the preferred payment um, by 80%, all right, of the transactions that are done. Your donors are already using digital for everything, already using it every day. I always tell church leaders when we do some consulting, hey, remember, one of the last places anybody writes a check today is where? For church, there not, may not be any checks written, right? Your people are using credit and debit cards every day, all day long, it is crucial that you accept the fact that it is a necessity that you emphasize. You not just have digital giving as an option, but you actually emphasize it, put priority to it, because if you're not, you are losing money every single year, every single month, every single Sunday, okay? And I'm gonna show you how. We're gonna do a quick math exercise no Jedi mind tricks here, just basic, basic math, okay? How many tithe checks, cash donations, do you think your typical donor misses in a year? Put it in the chat box. Just on average, be conservative. We're going to be super conservative today. How many, if I'm average donor, Joe donor, how many checks or cash donations do you think I miss on accident a year, right? I'm on vacation. Kids are sick. Death in the family. Bad weather forgot my checkbook, we're switching banks, we're going to visit kids at college, we're going to watch college football game on the road, moms in hospital, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Life happens. Does the average donor, you think, miss one, two, three donations, right? I'll tell you that statistically, the average donor misses at least four per year, once a quarter. Very conservative. But let's be even more conservative and just say, Let's give Joe and Jane Smith, our donors here, will protect the innocent, and let's just say they only miss two tithes a year. Totally reasonable, okay? Um, and, and they give $6,000 annually. End of the month, they write a check for $500. If they miss two tithe checks, how much did the church lose, okay? Not a trick question, not a trick question. They lost $1,000, okay? They lost $1,000. If I'm in a church, and let's just say that's an average, and they're losing, your church is losing $1,000 on Joe and Jane Smith types of donors, and you've got 200, that's $200,000 of missed donations, right? Very basic, simple math. Do the math yourself for your own church. How many members do you have? Donation. Assume they all miss one or two. How much money is being lost? Okay, remember the point here. You have to make digital giving a priority. If you don't, you are losing money. Okay, in the case of Joe and Jane Smith, you're losing $1,000. Guess what? If they were on a recurring donation, let's play another little game here. Let's pretend they put their debit card on file at the church. How many donations would they have missed if their 
uh, debit card was on file on a recurring donation, they would miss zero donations, right? What do you think the approximate annual transaction fees on their $6,000 would be? Go ahead and put your answer in the box, right? Because here's what a lot of church leaders say and financial team members and elders and deacons and everybody will hear, oh, the transaction fees, we don't want to pay transaction fees. It's too expensive. It's too expensive. What you're failing to recognize is that you're losing far more money, far more money on missed checks and cash than you could possibly lose, quote unquote lose, on a processing fee. The annual transactions fees, approximately on $6,000 is D, 185 bucks. That's it. So let's just remember here, big picture, you've got to know the numbers. Joe and Jane Smith, they miss twice a year. Church is out $1,000. They're on a recurring debit card transaction on an ongoing basis, the church, instead of losing a thousand, the church is going to pick up what? $820, right? It's a huge gain. So when churches get on our coaching programs and they see a 30, 40, 50% year over year total increase in donations, they're like, wow, is this magic? No, it's not magic. It's just simple math. If you're dependent on checks and cash, you're bleeding money every single Sunday. It is what it is. Uh, people are just missing. It's, it's life. Life happens. If you can get them on recurring donations, the amount of donations you will pick up um, is drastic. And these are the types of numbers that you need around. So when I say that digital giving needs to be a necessity, a priority, and not just a want, what will make it a necessity in your church is knowing these types of numbers. Ultimately, when churches aren't experiencing success in digital giving and recurring donations, they don't know the numbers. Just plain and simple. They're not clear on them. They, they are gathered their team around preferences and opinions and not facts and not numbers. They don't have a goal they're shooting for, okay? And a lot of churches will be in survival mode, and they say, well, we'll just make it up on Christmas Eve. We'll just ask for it when we need it, special gift donations, okay? The true litmus test for your church budget, if you really want to know if it's healthy, is in the middle of summer. Not, not Christmas Eve, not special Sunday, special offerings, but are you meeting or exceeding your budget in the middle of summer when people aren't around, it's busy, or churches a lot of times are what I call dying on the vine, that, that people are gone and donations are down. Um, that's a great litmus test of the health of your budget. And recurring donations is a fantastic way to make a significant dent in times like the middle of summer and on an ongoing basis and get out of survival mode and get into thriving mode. What creates financially thriving churches are systems and processes, knowing the numbers, gathering people around the numbers, um, and then moving forward. Okay, so that is secret number one. Got to know the numbers and you have to make digital giving and recurring donations specifically. You need to make them a necessity, a priority based on fact and not just a once and it would be nice. Okay, if you have questions as we go, put them in the chat box. Okay. All right, let's talk about secret number two. Secret number two is you have to prioritize your features around the goal and not the other way around. What do I mean? What, what are features? Well, features are the digital giving technology features that allow your people to give online. Things like they can give online using a browser, right? They're on Internet Explorer or Google Chrome or Firefox. They can give that way uh, when they're actually not a church or wherever. They can give through a mobile device, so their iPhone. They can give through a mobile browser, okay? Open up the browser on their phone and give. They can give through an app on their phone. Other tech features, text to give, right? Very popular, kind of controversial to an extent. People aren't sure if it's really working correctly. Kiosks, right? Event registration features, and then ACH. These are digital giving features. Now, the question is, are you letting the features drive your strategy or are you letting your goal the goal being let's get more participation in digital giving and specifically let's get recurring donations so that we can beat our budget uh, and meet our budget in the summer and we can be a thriving church not a surviving church okay well here's my point some of these features don't encourage recurring donations right it's going to shock some people but it's true and trends and studies show it 
These are the features that encourage one-time donations. Apps on the phone, mobile phone, right, to give through your mobile device and kiosks. They're great, just so I'm very, 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 very clear. I am not saying these features are bad or you shouldn't have them. What I'm saying is that a lot of churches are very excited about text to give, and this is for the young people, and they all want apps. The problem is two things. Number one, people do not make recurring long-term commitments via text and via apps. They do not. All trends show it. When people make a recurring, put their card on file, they do it through a desktop. They do it as a calculated decision from their home. They do not do it spur of the moment by tapping an app and dropping their card on file. A very few exceptions, things like iTunes, etc. but you get the point. All right, number one, people are not using, a, a, I mean, text in and of itself is for one-time quick communications. It's not for recurring long-term commitments, okay? Um, number two, if you are driving your digital giving strategy through these features with an attitude like, hey, young people love the text to give, text to give's easy, et cetera, et cetera. The other problem too is that you, you pigeonhole um, your, your donors, right? Are the ones without any money anyway. And you get my point, I'm being tongue in cheek. Of course, it's important that they give, but my point is, financially speaking, they're the ones who don't have a lot of money and younger people struggle to make recurring commitments anyway. And so you don't wanna let features and opinions and preferences drive your strategy like vague things like that. You want very calculated, hmm, when are people really gonna make a recurring commitment? Well, they're probably gonna do it on Sunday night when mom and dad, husband and wife, individual single person has time to sit down, look at their budget, think about it, and then they're gonna go put their card on file. That's how they're gonna do it. So you have to make sure that you're staying focused on two key metrics, okay? There's two numbers that matter in your digital giving. Number one, are we seeing more total dollars come in each Sunday? And number two, are we seeing those total dollars coming in, digital dollars as we call them, are they being converted to recurring donations, um, which is absolutely crucial. You stay focused and let the numbers drive the strategy. Don't let the features drive the strategy, okay? Here's how you know if features are driving your strategy. We talk to churches and they'll say things like, very, what I call very, just very vague statements. Well, it seems like the young people are using text to give a lot, so our strategy must be working, right? You don't want to evaluate your success based off of that. It's very vague, it's not based on numbers. We've got a core group of people who love the kiosk. That's fine, the new kiosk is the mobile device. The kiosk encourages a line of people who are ultimately gonna get frustrated and you're gonna lose opportunities, all right? So you don't want stuff like that. Back to the future, Bobby, that's what I call the young person at your church who has convinced you that you need to have Apple Pay and Google Pay and you gotta have an awesome app and if you don't, then, then none of the young people are gonna participate in giving. That's back to the future, Bobby, right? Totally feelings driven, and it's just statistically, financially, um, everyday life, not true, okay? Um, don't let features drive the goal. We're at 50% digital giving, but we're less than 20 recurring. If that's you, features are driving the strategy, all right? A lot of churches we talk to have made some progress in digital, but they haven't made progress with recurring. The reason ultimately is because whether they know it or not, they're pushing one-time donations through their emphasis and through their features. You've got to stay focused on the two key metrics. You've got to let the numbers and the goal drive the strategy. Your features around the goal and not the other way around. The surviving church is a church who totally goes off of feeling, right? There's one or two or three key people or whatever who think it needs to be this way because of their own habits or whatever. You have to look at real data. You have to look at how people are actually using technology today. I'm 31 years old. I'm right in the quote unquote young people crowd. I have not ever one time made a recurring donation or, or a recurring payment from my phone except for iTunes, nor would I ever for security purposes. I will do it all from a desktop after I've had a chance to talk with my wife and we put our card on file and pay our bills. Um, that's what I'm talking about. Um, you have to look at the real ways people are using data and using technology. Surviving churches are all over the place because they're not letting numbers drive anything. Um, the thriving church says, hey, this is our goal. We want to achieve. We want more people giving digitally because we need those dollars. We're, we're not going to lose any more checks and cash. We want people giving on a recurring basis, and we're going to communicate, and we're going to emphasize features that will get 
that goal recurring donations, okay? Secret number three, and if you have questions, put them into the chat box. Q&A time is a coming, all right? Secret number three, the 5C communication strategy, okay? It's the most important thing I'm gonna say today. I've, I've given you some facts, some statistics, all right? I've pointed to trends, etc. Let's talk about just another sort of um, feet on the ground type of thing because a lot of churches will say, okay, well, how do we get people using digital donations? We've, we've got online and we've got all these features. What, what, what's the way to do it? And the answer isn't technology, okay? It's not technology. The answer is, is not found in any, any tech solution that's going to do it for you. The answer, when we say 5C, we, may, we mean five points of communication, okay? The 5C strategy is what we mean. That's how you get people to give on your, um, on your digital giving platform, and that's how you get them to give on a recurring basis. You have to communicate about digital giving and communicate about recurring giving through five different channels. This is super, super important, okay? Most churches only talk about giving from one place. That is upfront, and that's usually an offering plate talk, a Christmas Eve you know, type message, and then a year-end letter, which is usually a statement of giving and saying thanks. Those are the two times they really talk about donations, upfront and a year-end letter. And what I'm telling you is that if you want to grow your donor base and you want them to give online and you want them to give on a recurring basis, you have to talk through other points of communication, okay? So here's five different ways you can communicate with donors that you should be utilizing, okay? Up front, it's a great place, okay? Giving talks, offering plate talks, sermons, sermon series, individual sermons. Up front is a great communication point. It's a 1C, okay? Email course, a great place to communicate with your donors. That's a 2C, right? That's your second uh, communication point is via email, via text. You can text your donors and talk to them about donating, All right? Video and slides, a great place to communicate, right? A C strategy, communication strategy to your donors. And then um, a fifth one would be testimony, right? Communicate about the financial needs and goals of the churches through testimonials, real testimonies of people who have um, experienced the, uh, the, the, the greatness of encountering God through your local church and through your ministry, okay? When you communicate through these various channels, and you need to be communicating through all these channels, you need to be specific, right? You need to emphasize, make it a necessity Give online. We want, as you communicate through a text, through an email, up front, we want you to give online. Giving, uh, doing all of your financial transactions online. We're trying to recognize your habits and give you an opportunity to give to the church this way. Here's where you go and do it, right? You have to be very specific to get people to give online. Some people just don't know. They're not clear and they can't navigate. Sometimes it's hard to find. Some church websites, it's eight steps, right, to make a donation. Here's where you go and here's how to give online. In other words, you are instructing them, requesting that they give on a recurring basis, right? Now, let me just pause here for a second because we get a lot of questions um, around this type of thing. I want to elaborate just a few more points. The 5C strategy doesn't mean that every Sunday you do an offering plate talk, you send an email an hour later, you text them at dinner, etc., etc., right? It means that you recognize in your donor base, not everybody responds through a sermon or through a giving talk, right? When you only communicate about donations through upfront and through a year-end letter, you're assuming that almost everybody in your congregation is gonna respond and be impacted um, and they're gonna give that way. The problem is you probably miss about 60 plus percent of your people. Do some people respond to an offering plate talk? Well, sure, and it's not a reflection um, if they don't, that your offering plate talks aren't good. You know, it's not a reflection of that. Into different things. God made us unique, right? One of the great things about the gospel, it doesn't mean uniformity. We're all unique. And so some people don't respond as readily to a, an offering plate talk and a sermon. But when they get an email and they read it and they're checking their email right now, studies show eight to 12 times a day, and there's a link in there. They might be impacted, affected, and respond, or via text, audio, visual, right? Some people need to see an image, a photograph, a graphic of 
the church's mission and that impacts them and they give. Some people need to see video. Some people need to hear through a testimonial and that impacts them and moves them to donate. Different points of communication means that you know God made everybody a little bit different and people respond to different things and it's totally okay for somebody to be impacted by another mean of communication that gives them um, and empowers them to go and give. So that's the reason why the 5C strategy is so important to spread out your communication. Okay, spread it out across different channels, which takes off some of the pressure of only getting donations when you stand up front and talk about it, right? Put a one in the chat box if you felt the pressure of, great, I gotta stand up and ask for money again, right? When we talk to church leaders, we've communicated over 10,000 for over a decade. It's one of the number one things we hear, right? Um, it's this kind of um, crazy, contradictory thing where um, pastors will say, I feel like I never talk about money so that when I do, it's totally awkward, you know, and there's just that cat and mouse game. It's, it's hamster wheel kind of feeling. And part of the reason for that is because you're only talking about giving from one channel. If you spread it out and you actually talk about giving more and not less from one place, but more through different channels, people won't feel like uh, what they're feeling. And that's one of our quote unquote secrets sometimes when a church leader says, should I talk about giving more or less? The answer is more through different strategies. And I'll share some more here in a bit about our seasonal strategy as well. But you have to tell givers where to give online and how to give on a recurring basis and be very specific, which again will come from uh, a necessity and emphasis and not just a want. Okay. The myth is if we have it, they will use it. That's the myth churches fall in and, and, and believe. And they launch all these digital giving technology features and they get 30, 40% participation, less than 15% recurring, and they're totally frustrated. You have to communicate about digital giving so they'll go give online and you have to communicate and ask and request they give on a recurring basis and they will. If you don't communicate about it, they will not use it and they definitely won't use it on a recurring basis okay the surviving church when they launch digital the surviving church one time maybe once a month maybe they put it in the bulletin they throw it out there and the assumption is wow we've got five different ways they can give online let's just put it out there and everybody's going to use it it'll be unbelievable what happens they don't get recurring donations they're frustrated listen very close there is no difference between a check donation, a cash donation, and a one-time digital donation. Let me say that again. No difference between a check donation, a cash donation, and a one-time digital donation. If they only give one time, one time, one time, one time, they're still going to miss just like they miss a check or a cash, and then you will lose money on the processing fees. So you can see how important it is that you emphasize recurring donations. The thriving church, on the other hand, has a communication strategy. Literally, there are dates on the calendar that they look at and they communicate to their people through different channels. Sometimes they play a video on Sunday morning. If they don't have video capability, they put up a slide. Sometimes they send out an email. Sometimes they send out a text. They do offering plate talks. They send out a, a direct mail piece, right? A letter to their congregation. They're talking about um, giving more, but more scattered, right, through different channels, reaching more people as a result, getting more dollars, more donations as a result. And because they're emphasizing recurring donations at every point of communication, not only are they getting more total dollars by having a diverse communication strategy, they're getting more recurring dependable donations. All right. So those are our three secrets. You have to absolutely, absolutely make recurring donations a necessity and not just a want. Secret number two, prioritize your features around the goal and not the other way around. Let numbers drive your strategy, not features. And then number three, have a 5C communication strategy, at least five different channels, five different points of communication where you are talking about donations all right now with that Haley I'm gonna cue you on here and I hope we've had some questions in the chat box about uh, digital giving or recurring donations um, so go ahead and let's field some of those and then we'll keep rolling 
Hey, Sam. Yeah, we've gotten several great questions. Um, the first one is from Lisa. And she asks, is it important to still offer one-time giving methods for the people who are new givers or maybe they're just not ready to commit to recurring giving yet? Absolutely, of course. You know, um, I, think, I think the broad point that I would say is yes, because some people are always going to give one time, whether it's their financial situation, maybe they just can't make a recurring commitment no matter what. It's, it, it is what it is. It's fine. Um, but uh, so my answer is yes. However, just keep in mind that people every day, your congregation, your people are making recurring payments using cards. Okay. So there's a lot of times church leaders lose sight of, look, they're already doing this. This is what makes uh, recurring and digital giving so easy and such a, such a no brainer is because your people are already doing this day in and day out, day in and day out. They're using their cards. They're putting their cards on file with iTunes and electric company and, and on in school and, and soccer and on and on and on and on. And so you're only playing to their natural habits. Today, it is not a, a, a habit of, of, uh, of our, our community, our people, to go write checks and cash every single day. That is 100% a very small percentage of people today. All right? What else we got? This is from Jeremy. He says, what success have you seen with older donors who are uh, used to using only checks and cash to have them move to digital giving? How did you get them past their mistrust of the systems and maybe they're nervous to put their credit card info on the internet. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll make a couple comments here. Um, communication solves everything, okay? And so with, with older donors, you have to tell them why you want recurring donations, not just that you have it. The why is huge, you know? Hey, everybody, it actually is more streamlined for the church when we can know exactly what's coming in. And actually, if you put your, your debit card on file and it's a recurring donation, we can plan a whole lot better, you know, than, than not knowing. And so you have to explain to them why. Um, and we found that older people in your congregation, they understand it. You know, they understand whether it's business or finance, whatever, like they get it. You, you want dependable dollars and you have to just walk them through it through a series of communication patterns. Um, so that's big. Um, you know, as far as, uh, again, I, I always go back to statistics. There are no statistics of any kind anywhere that will show you that older people, no matter what their age, are not using digital, right? And so this perception that a lot of older people are still out writing checks on an everyday basis and carrying cash, there's some, but there's far more, far more older people using debit and credit cards every single day. Um, and church is still the only place where they actually write a check. So I think sometimes it's just changing a habit more than it is, you know, that they really love checks and cash, uh, in, in my opinion, and statistics 100% will back that up. Uh, but good question. What else we got? This is from Dave. He says, we have a fair amount of people who give digitally already, but they haven't transitioned to recurring donations. How do we encourage that more effectively? You stand up and you tell them exactly that. <laughs> and you say, you know, here's the thing, and I'll, I'll talk more about this in a minute, but um, you need to explain to them why they need to give on a recurring basis. So I would literally stand up and say, hey, there are so many of you that already give online and we're so grateful. We're so thankful. It makes it streamlined for us. And the reason why we offered it is because we know you're already doing it in everyday life. So we're just excited that it, it was great for you too. But here's the thing. It will make a huge impact this fall. You have to tie it to a season and tie it to ministry initiatives. Okay. That's a key. If you're taking notes, when you're communicating to your donors about donations, it is a game changer when you tie it to a season and you tie it to an initiative, all right? Also will help you be clear in your communication. So again, go, going back, I'm up front. Hey, listen, we need you to consider giving on a recurring basis. I'll tell you why. This fall, as you know, we have our after school program. This fall, as you know, we're gonna send two missionaries out. And of course, we have all of our normal expenses that we incur as a church. So when you give on a recurring basis, it allows us to do each of these ministries more effectively with less stress because we actually know for sure what's coming in or a portion of what's going to come in. So it really makes a huge difference. If you could consider doing that, that's why we need you to do it. And here's how you do it. Go to, you know, the rockchurch.com and, and go ahead and go to give. And then you can see a, a checkbox there that says, make it a recurring commitment. I'm just going to request that you do that. And we're going to even send you an email with a link to just to remind you and make it easy. Boom. That, that's all you got to do and do that a couple times. Again, communication solves everything. 
but sometimes the communication stress can be um, can be lessened if you tie your reasons why to real ministry initiatives because your people are participating in these ministry initiatives and so they get it right and so when you say we've got the after school program and missionaries and normal church expenses and we just hired a youth pastor and on and on people see it you know and so they go oh yeah we are doing all this stuff and some of them are even volunteering their time and so what happens is they they get the connection and they give right and they do they do what you ask them to do so that's my answer there we're going to do some more questions okay i've heard uh, haley said we've got some others that we're going to cover in just a minute i hope this has been helpful. I mean, has it? Maybe put a one in the chat box um, if it's been time well spent learning about digital giving, how to get recurring donations. I wish we could cover everything in a webinar, okay? We can't. Even if we had all day, we still couldn't. Um, and so we've put together an offer, a program, a system you can follow to help you install some of these systems that we're talking about, okay? Because old habits die hard, and I tell every surviving church, you have to put processes in place until you do, it will not change, right? It's not gonna happen in one week, it has to be an ongoing basis week after week where you're implementing a strategy. And so we wanna make available to you a digital giving launch strategy and a long-term strategy that is done for you, right? Because a lot of church leaders will say, but I don't have time to, to, to figure out this strategy and execute the strategy. So that's why we've developed the Spark Campaign. The Spark Campaign is designed to give you all the resources that you need to communicate 5C strategy with your congregation, with your people, week after week on a schedule with resources that are done for you. Here's what you get with the Spark campaign. You get a quick start launch program with multiple coaching videos, eight coaching videos to help you actually um, make progress. And you can see here our, our flow chart, right? We wanna get you the leader gets you fired up. We want to gather your team around a strategy and then roll it out to your congregation and increase your giving. That's exactly what we'll coach you through. It's a strategy you can follow just like we've been doing on this webinar that your team can gather around. We've got a migration campaign to help you actually get people giving on your digital giving platform. And then this is my absolute favorite. P pay very close attention. You get the Spark Communication Suite. Um, total value over $2,200, but here's what Spark is, okay? Five times per year, okay? Five times, separate times a year, you will get a collection of communication resources, sermon outlines, sermon slides, done for you emails to your givers, done for you slides, done for you visuals, giving talks, graphics, there's bonus materials like sermon notes, um, done for you videos, uh, that you can actually play from up front, professionally produced videos you can play from up front, donor letters. Every single season, okay, through what we call the five seasons of generosity, follow me here, fall, winter, holiday, spring, and summer. Each of those seasons, you will get a communication package for that season that includes a combination of these different channels. Remember 5C strategy, all done for you, all ready to go, you just have to implement them. This is a game changer if you're a church who just says, we'll never get it done, we can never do this. We know, we get it, so we're gonna give you the resources so that you can actually go and implement them year after year. Um, totally fired up, Here, here's who this works for, okay? Churches who, who didn't have digital giving at all, so maybe you're a church, maybe you don't have it, you're getting ready to launch it, it's on the docket, and you're thinking, oh man, we need to figure out how we're gonna communicate about it, or, Maybe you're a church that has digital giving, but not many people are participating, and you're just thinking to yourself, we need to start communicating more about it, or we're gonna jumpstart that through something like Spark. Or maybe you're a church that has great participation. If you do, kudos to you, well done. Um, but maybe you don't have a lot of recurring donations, and you're thinking, man, I'd love to transition, right, with that question was just asked. I'd like to transition people over to recurring. Well, we're gonna give you the communication resources to do that. Um, you can see, Daryl, six months overall giving increase by 50%, all right? Uh, and here he is just saying, look, it's biblical giving. It's, it's communication resources that are off the charts. You get our quick start launch program. You get our migration campaign. You get the Spark Communication Suite five times a year. $2,291 in coaching and resources done for you, including professionally produced videos. I mean, it's just crazy, okay? Normally $697. We have a in-webinar special today, 
for 20 churches, we're going to offer you the Spark $348. Like, that's it, okay? Five times a year, $348 is a one-time 50% off investment, and you can go to sparkdonations.com. There's going to be a link in the chat stream, and you can get access um, to five times a year, fall, winter, holiday, spring, summer, boom. You've got communication resources, letters, coaching videos, um, uh, there's emails, uh, there's done for you slides, there's videos that you can use, 5C strategy to communicate to your people through multiple channels. You'll reach more people, right? You're, that's part of the goal. You're going to get in front of more people. Um, more people will hear it and give, and we will emphasize recurring donations. If you move quick, we've got some bonuses for you too. Some other things we were thinking through, what else would be helpful for churches that want to really maximize their donation dollars. And so we're going to offer a bonus, okay, a $99 value. It's the offering time system. Maybe you're a church who says, you know, I really just don't, this offering time, giving plate talks, it's kind of stale, it's same old, it's awkward, we're just kind of running out of things. We've got an offering time system that we're going to include for these first 20 churches um, that sign up today. You can get started for $348, um, 50% off, okay, to have resources um, every single season. I mean, it's just absolutely, uh, it's a game changer. It's going gonna, it's gonna to change everything if you just implement these resources. Our fast action bonus today, $59 value. We're going to give you a free resource, 39 things every pastor needs to know about money. Um, and we're really trying to just give you as many resources as we can to jumpstart and get you on a path of being a financially thriving church, get you out of survival mode. Here's just a summary, everything that's included, our quick start launch campaign, migration, spark, offering time system, 39 things every pastor needs to know, over $2,400 of coaching value resources right for you for $348. That's it. That's all you ever pay. Um, sparkdonations.com. 50% off um, a, a system for you to implement immediately and get out of survival mode and get into thriving mode. Dale Schaefer, hey, we usually average around $6,500 per week in our offering. Previous highest, $8,900 this past Sunday. With no special giving emphasis, we received $13,000 in undesignated giving. The giving talks alone with a little local creativity are worth the price of the program. And, and churches read that and they go, wow, what happened? That's right. They just communicated with more clarity through more channels to their donors, more total dollars coming in. It's that simple. You just need the resources to do it. And you can get started today for $348, 50% off at sparkdonations.com. I am totally fired up for 20 churches to go get this right now because we talk to churches every day and I consult with churches who, if they just had this, had access to it, um, would absolutely change everything for them and they'd have a lot less stress, they'd have a system in place um, and they'd have more total dollars for ministry, which is ultimately your goal, right? Your path, your bridge to reaching more people from a financial perspective is getting more total dollars in and more dependable dollars through recurring donations and the bridge to that is systems processes communications it's that simple three hundred and forty eight dollars at spark donations Haley I am I am ready for more questions I love it let's go what, what do we got all right Sam um, you mentioned the 5c strategy have you found that one method of communication seems to work better with certain generations than others like does texting work better with younger generations um, no, not not necessarily generationally speaking. I think the, the you know people respond to different things. I mean, it could be anything from a, a individual right who might be more inclined to respond to a video or a, a visual slide versus a giving talk. You know, I'm that way. I'm high energy. I don't like sitting still. I have a difficult time focusing. And so, what really speaks to me are things like slides or or a brief testimonial. It just it gets me really engaged. And so, part of that I think is just individuals are all different. And so, when you scatter your communication through different channels, you're going to reach more people. Um, so more important than anything else, um, I wouldn't worry too much about generational, like letting generational trends drive your financial strategy. I see that as a pitfall for a lot of churches. Um, it, you know, just for, for what that's worth, we do, we talk to a lot of churches and that, that's a pitfall. You want to let numbers and you want to let processes and you want to let calendar dates 
tied to specific um, channels of communication to drive everything. Be consistent there. Don't worry about trends or trying to make sure you get it right for a particular age group. Scatter, 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 um, and you'll be successful. What else we got? Great. Well, how often do you suggest that we talk about giving in an actual sermon? Um, in a sermon, well, I guess there's a few ways I would answer that. You know, I mean, I think offering plate talks are great every Sunday, right? Because we need to be reminded why we give and the ministry initiative. So if we're talking about an offering plate talk on an every Sunday basis, um, that, that's one thing. A sermon, you know, I, I think that having sermons or sermon series that are designed around giving, why we give money, are important. And so um, I don't know that, that I can give you how often you should talk about it in a particular sermon, but I think there should definitely be sermons throughout the year, whether it's one or more, it's totally your, your preference, that talk about money. Um, money, here's the, here's the crazy thing, everybody, okay? We consult with all these churches. Struggle the most with money are the ones who talk about it the least, right? Churches who struggle with money the most are the ones who talk about it the least. And it's this kind of reverse effect that's really confusing, but the less you talk about it, the more awkward it is, right? Like it is with a lot of stuff in life. You know, the less you talk about it, when you bring it up, it's awkward. And so I think that being consistent and making sure that your people um, are being taught about it is important. Jesus talked a lot about money. The Bible talks a ton about money, a lot. I mean, a, a whole lot. And so you've really got to make sure that you're also following that same pattern and people uh, are engaged biblically on the topic. And then at a, at a very you know functional level, they know where their dollars are going. Some church members have no idea where their dollars are going. They get a one year, uh, you know, once a year, they get a, a statement and that's it, right? And they don't have any idea what it's being used for, how it's being broken down, et cetera. So it's important that um, you are educating, you are giving them perspective on where the dollars are going and you're encouraging them, thanking them, showing gratitude um, for donations. So I hope that helps. What else we got? Do you suggest um, having a special giving at Christmas and at the New Year? Sure. I, I don't think it's bad um, at all because people, um, there's really two reasons, right? If we're all down to earth about it, some people, um, especially high income earners, are, are they, they need to get rid of money before the end of the year. It, it's, uh, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just the way the world works. So I think it can definitely be a smart part of your strategy. Um, some people are recognizing maybe they've fallen short during the year and haven't given as much as they wanted to, and it's a chance to, to bring it up. So absolutely. However, lots of churches fall into the special donation, special offering you're in, right, and the attitude's like, well, we don't need any systems or processes or anything consistent because we'll make it up at the end of the year, and, you know, Joe Smith will write a huge check. And and um, and we see that with a lot of churches. They're very, very dependent. If you took away, I guess I would put it this way, okay? If you took away uh, the Christmas Eve service, um, then what would your budget be like? And that's what, how I would run finance meetings. I would say, hey, you know what? We're going to just assume we get $0 on Christmas Eve at the 11th hour, right? And we're going to assume that the responsibility and impetus for us to, to manage our finances and do ministry um, and do it very well, financially speaking, um, we're just going to assume that it's on the every regular Sunday, just like our, our testimonial a second ago from Dale Schaefer. Um, we're going to assume that our processes and our communication and, and our hard work in communicating to people about it will drive the donations that we need. Um, so that, that would be my comment there. You all, I want to, um, it looks like we have one more question. Sorry, Haley's flagging me down here, which is great. What else we got, Haley? Yeah, we just had one more question come in. This is, how do you get staff yeah. on board with this vision? How do you get staff on board with the vision? You know, that's a, that's a challenge. It just just uh, everybody knows. It's no secret. Okay, maybe put a one in the chat box if you've had a hard time getting everybody on the same page about money. Um, I think we all have, especially about digital, if anything else. Um, and so I think I mentioned it earlier it is so crucial that you focus on on actual numbers, okay? And what we notice is so many churches, like one of two things happen. Number one, it's very, very vague. And so it's like, well, we know young people really like to text. Let's get text to give. And like, that's the whole reason why you do it. It won't benefit you drastically if you do that, especially not recurring donations. So there's almost like two extremes, I would say. And I'm going to get to a point here, but like the one extreme is you're just vague, vague, vague. The other extreme is you've got one or two very strong personalities 
um, who are driving the financial strategy. I'll give you a concrete example. You've got a, a man or a woman on your financial team who is a banker, right? It's what I always hear. Like, well, I'm a banker. I know money. For me, I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Because they're going to manage your church budget like you're a, like you're a, a, an Inc. 100 company, right? And those are the very people who will say, let's not emphasize di uh, digital giving because we don't want to give up money to processing fees. And I'm just like, hey, it's basic math. You haven't run the numbers. You're losing money if you're dependent on checks or cash. So my point is, you can't be vague. You can't let preferences and one person, two people drive the whole thing. You've got to put the numbers down. If I were you and you're trying to get, um, you're trying to get people on board, I would say, look, here's how many donors we have approximately. Here's the average donation that we get from, from our members across, across all the congregation. If our members miss one tithe per year, this is what we lose. If they miss two tithes per year, this is what we lose and put those numbers out there and then just run a quick math. Hey, if we can just get, we can just get half of our people, a third of our people on recurring donations, you will usually make up the money literally 10, 20, 30 times over uh, than what you're already losing. So that's what I would do. It ultimately, you got to get them around numbers and facts and not preferences, right? Um, listen, go to sparkdonations.com. I just want to challenge you again to invest in a system. All the questions that have been asked today are answered and there's a process and a resource for you to go and do this, like what you just asked with your finance team, how do you get your staff and people on board? Um, you gather them around a strategy like Spark and everybody watches the same thing, has the same facts, the same goals, the same resources, and you go and you do it, right? That's what it takes. $348, it's 50% off at sparkdonations.com. And we're going to give it to 20 churches today. We're going to include all the bonuses, the offering time system, 39 things every pastor needs to know about money. Go to Spark Donations at a bare minimum. Just go and look at what is being offered, the system, the process that you could um, invest in to get out of survival mode, get into thriving mode. Guys, my name is Sam Hill. I am a team leader with The Rocket Company, and we exist to invest in you through free training just like this and through coaching programs and systems that we know you don't have time to do. We've done it all for you and we will coach you, we will encourage you, we will equip you to go out and install systems at your church that will help you and help you get more recurring donations. Why? So that you can go do more ministry and chase your ministry dreams uh, that we know you have. Thank you so much for being here um, and we'll see you on our next training. Take care.